In this video, you're gonna learn how to turn this low poly character into a rigged character so you can animate them, either uh, for uh, Blender animations or if you wanna put this character in a game. Check out the other video where I actually model this character from scratch if you wanna learn that one first, because I made a separate one creating this guy from scratch. And then you can watch this video again to do the rigging. All right, so why would you even wanna rig a character to begin with? Well, it's not really much fun having a guy sliding around in a T-pose all day. So we have to create a skeleton for him so we can actually animate those with keyframes and have the arms and legs move in or even turn him into a ragdoll if that's what you wanna do. And we're gonna start by creating the armature. I press uh, one on the keypad to go into the front view here. Make sure I've got no object selected here. And make sure the cursor is in the center here as well at the feet, very important. Also the character's center should be at the feet here. We model this character with its pivot point down here at the feet. Good practice to do it that way because then it's easy to position the character in a world. So make sure that pivot point and the origin of the character is at the base of his feet and also this uh, 3D cursor now. If the 3D cursor is not there, maybe it's over here, press Shift C to reset the cursor. And then I'm gonna press Shift A to add an armature. And that creates a big fat bone right at the bottom here and slides it straight up. The first thing we wanna do when this bone is selected is go to this little tab here called Object Data Properties, but it looks like a running man. Go to Viewport Display and tick in front. And that will show this bone through the body. And you can see if I press the middle mouse button now, it's actually in the center, but it looks like it's showing it in front all the time. And then I press Tab to go into edit mode for this bone. And we've got this armature up here selected. I'll click with the left mouse button on the bone, press one on the keypad, and then I'm gonna slide it up now, and there's a few ways to do that. Uh, G I usually do, but it's difficult to keep the center here. You can press Z to force it into the movement of the blue Z axis here. Then I'm gonna put the balls where they go, and then click on the tip here, and then you can either enable this little move tool here, or press Shift, Space, and G, that's a shortcut for that, slide it down. We're gonna have a little pelvis bone here or a root bone, that's for his hips. And then I'm gonna press E to extrude this bone now and press Z to lock it into the Z axis. And this is gonna be a spine bone that we're gonna put there. E to extrude one more time and then Z to lock it onto the Z axis. And this is gonna be the upper part of the spine. And then I'm gonna skip the neck. I'm just gonna do a head for this one. So I'm gonna E to extrude this one, Z, and then up to the top of the head here. Now when I use the middle mouse button, I can rotate and see that it seems to be pretty good in the center of this body here. Click a bone here and press F2 to rename it. This one I'm gonna call root. Usually that's a common word for the root bone. Click on this one, press F2 and name it spine one. Click on this bone, F2, spine two. Click on this bone, F2, and this is gonna be called head. Now we need arms and legs. So I'm gonna click on this little joint here between the upper spine or spine two and the head. Press one on the keypad or in the numpad and E to extrude this one down. And sometimes, or usually I create a shoulder bone as well. I'm gonna do that for this one. So I'm just gonna extrude this one down to where the arm is gonna pivot. So about here. And then E to extrude to the elbow and E to extrude to the hand and then E to extrude to here. It's not so picky with the up and down. So I didn't lock it to any axis now. You can even click on one of these joints here and press G to refine these a little bit if you need to. Click on this one, G to move that up, maybe to there. What is important, however, is that you wanna make sure that you pick this uh, elbow joint and move it back slightly. Just a little bit like this will do. And uh, it's because if it's straight locked like this and uh, it could be a little bit tricky to animate it because the uh, it's called an IK solver or inverse kinematic solver. It doesn't really know how to fold the elbow if it's perfectly straight. So just put that little, little bend there. That'll help a lot later on. Okay, we're gonna do the same for the legs now. First of all, oh yeah, that one's connected. So we'll rename this first, press F2, shoulder. And here you should always do period or dot full stop L because that's his left now, his left shoulder. And we name it dot L because then we can do automatic symmetry later on. Then Blender will know how to translate that into a right side. So the same for this one, click on it, F2, upper arm dot L, dot L very important. Click on this bone, F2, lower arm dot L. And then here, F2, hand dot L. So that's our arms. We're gonna do the legs now. So click on the ball by the groin. One to get into front view, E to extrude it, 
and we'll just do it straight down roughly like this, not too picky on this one. Click this bone and press G to move it. And we're gonna put it where his hip is gonna be, roughly there. Click on this bone or this joint here, G to move that down to where the knee is. It could be a little bit tricky to see where we put the geometry for the knee. So do Alt Z. Okay, that was no good. Maybe we'll do Z and do wireframe. And we see we wanna move this all the way down to here, to the center of his knee. G, move that one down to there maybe. And E to extrude, keep this wireframe view if you find that one easier maybe. And then that's gonna be the lower leg and then E one more time. And then we can lock it Z if we prefer on the Z axis. And now when we look from the side, I'll press three on the numpad. Make sure we wanna put a little dent on the knee as well, just as we did for the elbow. So it knows how to fold this leg later on. We could move this joint back as well to there maybe. And the foot, we don't really wanna have straight down. So take the tiptoe here, press G and move that down to the tip of the foot because that's where it's gonna pivot later on. Okay, we can do Alt Z again to uh, disable uh, see-through and press Z and go to solid again if you wanna have it like this. And we need to rename this. So click on this bone, F2, upper leg dot L. This bone, F2, lower leg dot L. And then F2, foot dot L. There's one more thing we wanna do before we mirror this and that's we wanna set up inverse kinematics. And that's really good for, especially for legs. When you keyframe and animate the character, you don't really wanna to have to change as you lower his body weight down. You want the legs to bend automatically. You don't want the legs to come down with him most of the time. So you have to fold the leg manually. It's really tricky to keep the feet planted then. So we're gonna set up something called inverse kinematics. Before I do that, I wanna to go to front view here one on the numpad, press A to select all the bones. And in this view now in edit mode, press shift N and do recalculate roll on the view axis. It doesn't look like anything happened here, but it actually helps a lot when we do the animation later on, because then it knows which way to roll the bones. If you wanna do symmetry, like you wanna flip a pose from like this to this, by having the roll angle, that'll help out. Now we can go three on the numpad to see the side here. Click on the knee joint, and press E to extrude this one. Just a funny bone like that. Click on the heel joint here as well, press E to extrude that one. Looks really weird at the moment, but I'll tell you why. This one we need to do Alt P and clear parent, and then press G to move it. This is gonna be called what's called an inverse kinematic pole bone. And basically it's nothing else than it needs to have this bone so it knows where to aim the knee. So when it folds the leg, it wants to know in which way should my knee face? So that's what this bone is gonna do. It's gonna help us. We also have to do this, go to the bone here when this is selected and deselect deform. Otherwise it might try to deform this mesh later on using this bone and we don't really want the knee stretching forward here. Same thing for this bone, click on it, do Alt P and clear parent, but leave this one just where it is. But we do have to go to the bone here and deselect deform just the same way. And then we're gonna rename these bones. So click on this one, press F2, and then name this one IK leg pole.l. Click on this one, do F2 IK target.l. That's gonna be a target bone. We've got a few more steps to do for this uh, leg inverse kinematic. We do, I click on this uh, lower leg now, and then press Control Tab and go into pose mode. And now we've got a few more things here on the right side. Click on this bone constraints properties tab and add a bone constraint. And this one we're gonna do add inverse kinematics. On the target here, you can click on this little dropper tool here and click on the armature. And then on the bone, we need to type, this is gonna be the target bone. And we named this one conveniently to iktarget.l. So search for that one and pick that one up. For the pole target, we'll do the same. Armature and bone, it's the P-O-L-E. And then here we go, pole target. See how it flipped his foot out to the side now? We can fix that by changing the pole angle here. You can slide it or type it in. And since we did the roll angle from the front view, we need to type 90 here on the pole angle and that'll get the foot to face forward again. And if your character is uh, funking out now, mine isn't because this, I forgot to actually connect this uh, upper leg bone to the body here. If I press control tab, Make sure I've got uh, this select again. Press tab into edit mode. So we're out of post mode, but in edit mode. 
And if I move uh, this leg now, you see there's no dotted line here. So we need to connect this leg to his root bone here. So I'll make sure that I select this upper leg first, shift select his root bone, press control P and do make parent, but keep offset. And that created this little dotted line here. And that means that his leg is now connected. Okay, now we can go back into the pose mode. So I'll press control tab and go to pose mode and select this joint here. And that's important here. The chain length needs to be set to two because it's only going to affect this bone and this bone here. What we've done now when we've enabled inverse kinematics is that if I click on this bone and enable this little move tool and press G, you can see that it's actually moving the leg now. And if I click on this bone and press G, it actually folds it down. But we've got a problem with the foot because as he kneels down now, or as, as he squats, he's, the foot is tiptoeing down. So we have, that's pretty much the last thing we need to fix for this. So select the foot bone here and go to the bone tab here, click on relations and disable inherit rotation. That was step one. Now when we move it, it's like this, but we still have a problem. We can't really rotate the foot. We want this target bone to control the roll of the foot. So to do that, make sure that this uh, foot bone is selected. Go to the bone constraint tab again, click add bone constraint. And here we're going to do copy rotation. For target, we want to select this armature again. We select the armature and here we want to select the target bone. And if flipped it to the opposite side now, we need to change the target to local space and the owner to local space. That snaps it back. And finally, we need to do a few more things. If I do R to rotate, that seems pretty good. If I do R around the Z axis, you can see that it's actually rotating the wrong direction. So with this selected, we need to flip invert Z rotation. Now when we rotate on the Z, then the foot is rotated as we expect. We might have the same problem with the roll. So if I do R to rotate and Y, you can see when I rotate this right, the foot is rotating left. So we need to do the same thing. I'll select this bone again and invert the Y axis. Now when I click on this one and rotate it, it rotates the same. It's a bit quirky, but you'll get used to that one. Okay, now when we drop, uh, if we select the torso again here and do, or the pelvis and drop, you can see that the foot is nicely planted as he bends down and the knee is pointing. Remember this one, if I move this to the side, you can see that it's pointing the leg to that one. This is ready to be symmetrized now. So press control tab to go out of the, that mode, out of post mode. Make sure that the armature is selected here and then just press normal tab to go into edit mode again. Press A to select all the bones here. And now you can press F3 and type symmetrize and armature symmetrize here. And that automatically, since we named the bones dot L for left of all the legs and arms stuff, then it's actually automatically mirrored this into the other side. And now the final step is just to press tab to go out of edit mode, select your character, and then shift select the armature and press control P. And then we want to set parent to armature deform with automatic weights. And I think Blender is usually really good nowadays to get this automatic weight going properly. We can select the armature here, press control tab. And now if we try to drop them down, select the torso G to move it and the hat is not moving because it's a separate object, but the character is moving good. We can also try rotating the head. And we've got an issue now with the eyes, and that's because it didn't really know how to pick up those as uh, separate objects here. So this is a good opportunity to learn how to fix that. If something, we can check the other parts here as well, the other limbs. Our arms working pretty good. Rotate the elbow here. And could have done maybe some more geometry around the, the wrist to get uh, less deformation there, but it's pretty good. If you want to move the leg out, G got some uh, maybe excessive deformation here of the belt that we could get rid of. G to move on, rotate the knee. And if you want to hide the armature, just click on this little eye, you can see how it looks. So we've got a few things that we could tweak. The leg seems to be affecting the belt a little bit too much and the head is not affecting the eye enough. We'll enable the armature again, press A to select all the bones, Alt R to reset all the rotations and Alt G to reset all the movements. We'll fix the first part with the belt down here with what's called weight painting. And uh, weight painting is every vertex now, if we go into tab out of control tab, go back into object mode, select this character, press tab to go into edit mode and press one to go into vertex. Then we can see these verts here. And 
Basically, these verts have a value now that's linked to a bone. That's what this automatic weight thing did. So on item here, with this vertex selected, I can see that it's picked for the root bone here. It's only put 0 0.031 affecting. The spine is affecting it a little bit more, and the upper leg is affecting it quite a lot. And that's something we don't really want to do. And it could be a bit tricky here to edit these manually. So usually we do this in what's called weight paint mode. To go into weight paint mode, press tab to go, get out of edit mode for this one. Select the armature first from scratch here and shift select the character and go from object mode up here into weight paint. And that turns him blue like this. And, and it shows you how the vertices are assigned to different bones. I'll shift click and select a bone. It's very important that you hold shift if you want to select or deselect bones like this. But it's very important now, if I select this bone, we can see that the torso is affecting blue is nothing, um, cyan or light blue is a little bit, green is a little bit more, yellow is more, and all the way to red, that's the 100% how much it, 100% <laughs> how much it affects it. So we had some issues here where this leg bone, I'll do sh shift and select this bone and shift to deselect this one first. Shift select this one active. And we want to reduce the amount that the leg here is affecting the belt. So we slide the weight up here now down to zero, pretty much. And then we can just start painting here and see how that color goes back to blue. That means we're removing the weight now. So I'll just colorize this, make sure we take away everything on the belt here. I pan with shift and middle mouse button. Okay, that should be a little bit better. Since we're still in mirror mode, I only have to do this for one side. I'll go back into object mode, select this one, control tab into pose mode and G to move this one. And we can see that that looks better now. We're still affecting a little bit too much on the inner side of the belt. But you can refine this now with the weight painting technique and add and remove the weight now. Remember that the color blue is nothing and all the way to red is 100% how much this bone should affect a vert. For the eyes, we're going to do a slightly different method because we know that they want to be 100% linked to the head. For this one, I'll press Control tab to go back into object mode, select the character again, and press tab to go into edit mode <laughs> on the character. While the mouse is hovering over the eyes now, I'll press L to select the linked vertices here. That selected everything that was linked to this eye. Very handy way to select geometry that's detached from something else. And now I'm going to go up to Vertex and go to Vertex Group and I take Remove from All. That means that these vertices are no longer linked to any bone at all, no weight whatsoever. Because we want it to be 100% affected by this head bone now. So I go back into Vertex, Vertex Group, which is the same actually, I can press Control G to get into here. And I'm going to go Set Active Group, I'm going to select Head. And then we'll do Control G again and make sure that we do assign to active group. Now you can see here with these verts selected we can see that 100% or 1.0 which is 100% is connected to the head now. Tab out of edit mode, select the armature, control tab to go into post mode, left click to select the head and R to rotate and now we can see that the eyes are following good with the head 100%. The ears could have suffered the same problem but they seem to be all right. Okay we had a problem here. I accidentally added the vert here that we had. We must have had this vert, or I did. I'm not blaming you now. <laughs> I had this vert selected by mistake. <laughs> You'll do loads of errors on and off. Don't worry about those. It's all about learning how to fix those. Control tab out of edit mode of the armature. Click on the character. Tab into edit mode. And then I select this vertex here. And you can select. see now that I've uh, actually got assigned 100% to the head here. So first thing we're going to do here is remove the head vert weight here altogether. So this one's not linked to anything now. So with this one selected, shift select another vert that you want to copy it from, and then click on copy. And now when we go back, it's transferred all the weights from there to this one. So that should work pretty good now. We can tab out of edit mode, select the armature, control tab into post mode, and G to move this one. That works good. And make sure that the head is not affecting down there anymore. So there's ways to fix it if you screw up. <laughs> For the hat to follow the head, we can do it differently. Since that's not part of the same object, we can't weight paint that one. So select the hat and go to this uh, object constraints properties. Drop down this one and do child of. Pick the target and pick the armature. And then here, this one, we want to do head. And see that the hat disappeared now and put it over here. Just 
click on set inverse and that'll bring it back to here. Now when we animate the character, I'll select the armature, control tab, select the head, press R to rotate, then the hat will follow along with the head. All right, in this video, you learn how to rig a character and set up the armature so it affects the uh, low poly character. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you wanna see a future video where I'm gonna take this guy and we're gonna keyframe animate him into an idle pose, a walk animation, run animation, and maybe even some uh, fancy uh, donut eating move. It's a cop after all. Finally, you can also check out my Patreon page where the tutorial tier gets to download all of these files and uh, many others that I've created through my YouTube history. Until next video, take care and I'll see you then. Bye for now.